Welcome back third graders for another math lesson. Today's lesson is 11.9, same perimeter, different areas. We're near the end of unit seven, uh, measurement and geometry. So let's take a look at today's lesson. So today we are looking at polygons. Remember polygons are closed shapes. Polygons with the same perimeter in different areas. So what is the perimeter? Just to review, the perimeter is the distance around a figure, so on the outside. An area, if you recall, it's the inside. There are two ways to find area. We can multiply or we can count the square units. So you're gonna have an option today of counting the square units or multiplying. Now let's unlock the problem. So Toby has 12 feet of boards to put around a rectangular sandbox. How long should he make each side so that the area of the sandbox is as large as possible? So we have three sandboxes here. Now remember your objective today, each shape has the same perimeter, but different areas. So sandbox one has been done for us. Here we have a shape that has a perimeter. Remember on the outside, it has a perimeter of 12. Now there are two ways you can count the perimeter and that is to count each unit square or you can add. So if my bottom side length is five, that means my top side length is five. So I know five plus five is 10, and then I have my sides, one here and one over here. So five plus five, 10, and then you have one plus one, that's how you get 12. Now remember, same perimeter. So I'm gonna do sandbox two, and we need to decide what will the perimeter be we know it's 12, but what will the shape look like? It's going to have a different shape. So let's take a look. Sandbox two. I drew a rectangular shape here. Now the perimeter on the outside, that's the distance around, is three, 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 and three. And you would have to add up all of those. Now remember, same perimeter. So the perimeter will always be 12 for these three shapes. But my area will be different. Now there's two ways, again, you can find area. Looking at sandbox number one, I can multiply one times five, or you can count the unit squares inside. There are five unit squares. Now we can do the same thing with sandbox two. With sandbox two, I can multiply my sides or I can count the unit square. So I've left the area blank for sandbox one and sandbox two for you to figure out on a piece of scratch paper. Now let's look at sandbox number three. Again, we're looking at same perimeter. So I've drawn this shape for you. Now, um, Again, to find the perimeter, you can count the outside distance, or you can add. So if my bottom length is four, my top length is four. So I can add four plus four, and you can see that here. And then I have my sides, two on this side and two on this side. So two plus two. Again, same perimeter, 12. You notice there's 12 for each of our different sandboxes, but my area is different. You can tell by the shape of my polygon here, the area will be different. Again, you can count the inside unit squares or you can multiply. With your scratch paper, determine the area for sandbox one, sandbox two, and sandbox three. And let's take a look at what was our original question. How long should he make each side so that the area of the sandbox is as large as possible. So which sandbox should Toby use? Okay, so Toby should use sandbox number two. It has the greatest 
area, the largest area possible. So today your lesson is same perimeter, different area. Now let's move on to a different problem. Here we have two examples. The directions say draw rectangles with the same perimeter and different areas. For example A, it says draw a rectangle that has a perimeter of 20 units and an area of 24. Here's what I came up with. Here's my area. I have 24 and remember perimeter. So that would be six on the top here, six on the bottom, our distance around, four on this side, which means four on the other side. And when you add the, your sides up, you should get 20. And when we multiply for area or you count the unit squares on the inside, you should get 24. All right, let's take a look at example B. Example B, draw a rectangle that has a perimeter of 20, same perimeter, but an area of 25. So this is the shape, the polygon, I've come up with. It has a side length of 5 and 5. So and to find the area, I can multiply 5 times 5, or I can count the unit squares inside. And that gives me 25. Now let's practice with some other ones. But before that, let's answer this question. Explain how the perimeters of example A and B are related. So how are these examples related? you should know that they both have the same perimeter. Now, let's take a look at how are the areas related? Well, our areas are related because both shapes have the same perimeter. Okay, let's move on to our next examples. So in your book, looking at numbers seven and eight, your number seven and eight look like your practice book page and practice book page 211. So let's take a look at number seven. It says find the perimeter and the area, then tell which rectangle has a greater area. So like I said, let's take a look at number seven. Number seven, my perimeter for letter shape A is 16. And remember our learning objective, both shapes have the same perimeter. So if A has a perimeter of 16, then B should have a perimeter of 16. The difference, our areas will be different. So I have a multiplication sentence here for shape A. Six times two, and I got an area of 12. Again, you can count the unit squares on the inside for area, and you would get 12. Now shape B, I wrote a multiplication sentence here. I wrote four times four, because there's four and four. And again, you can count the unit squares or just multiply. Now, which rectangle has a greater area? That would be rectangle B. Now let's look at number eight. With your scratch paper, pause the video and determine what is the perimeter for shapes A and B. Should be the same number. Then determine what is the area for shape A and shape B before you move on and check. All right, so you should have determined the perimeter for both shapes for both polygons is 18. But now what is the area for shape A? What is the area for shape B? I'll give you a clue. I've written the math sentences. Now it's your job to determine what the area is. Okay, so the area for Shape A is 20, and the area for shape B is 18. Now again, we are to, to, to determine which shape has a greater area. Which shape is that? Compare the areas. Shape A, 
Good. Polygon A has the greater area. So let's review what we talked about today. Today we looked at same perimeter, different areas. Remember, area is the inside of a shape. I hope this helps. Good luck as you do page 211 in your practice book, and I'll see you next time.